I just sit and look around, see people a different way of life. You're just part of the world, you know, and it's not just about you, you know. Barbering, even though it's as simple as just that, right, it can be a catalyst for something good. Uh. To be honest, when I accepted the job, I wasn't really looking at it from like a monetary perspective. It's more of like playing a small part in moving Singapore daily. For the past three decades or so that I've taken the bus since I was in primary school, what has not changed is that Bus 14 has always taken me home. I have a plate over here that says, I'm your bus captain, Matthew Tate. This used to be part of SMRT's culture where they actually had to put the bus captain name on every bus. I have a working uh, bell system as well. Like, you can just press. And there you have it. It sounds like the actual thing. It was from an actual bus as well. There's actually a working destination sign. This is Route 110. Yeah, it goes to Changi Airport. And I spent like close to about 1K on it, from salvaging it from the scrapyard to actually getting it wired up at the shop. So uh, there will be news of like uh, buses that are being scrapped and spotted from actually a bus route that plies the scrapyard 925. So we will faster head down and actually take what we want from the buses. Uh. My collections grew and grew over the years and like some bigger items I can think of is like the actual bus chair that you see over here. And I actually uh, got it fabricated with a bottom so that you can actually sit on it like this. And it feels like you're sitting on the actual bus. Yeah. And not to mention my working coin box. It wasn't in the best condition. I had to bring it back, scrub it, wash it, find a lever so that there's a working lever for the coins to go down. And also fabricate a box. Let me show you. There's a box that I fabricated to collect the coins. Yeah, over here. And I treat it like my personal piggy bank. My name is Matthew. I'm 24 this year. And I've been a bus enthusiast for close to half of my life. Being an interchange supervisor is actually my dream job. Being so intimately involved in like the deployment of the buses. Hello, to Paloma a company with like serving the passengers and the bus captains. Kutaipo Hospital, you can go to Birth 2. Birth 2 got shuttle bus to bring you to Kutaipo Hospital. Yeah, number 2. Yeah, number 2 over there. Hey, you're going to have 6 minutes. You're going to have 6 minutes. Some of them are quite shy when they see cameras, yeah. I moved into his place after we got married, from Bukit Panjang to Bukit Batok. The whole neighbourhood was very new to me. So the first few days of being married especially, he made sure that he will go to work and go home from work together with me, just so I'll familiarise myself with the bus route as well as the bus stop to get off and get on. Before I was married, my working hours was at 11am. So one of the ways for me to make her feel comfortable is to wake up at the same time that she wakes up and go to work at the same time she goes to work. So we'll get to the bus stop at 7, we we'll take a bus together. There are a couple of buses that we can take. One of it is 106, another one is 174. From Bukit Batok to Orchard, it's about one and a half hours. I think we're kindred spirits because we both like long bus rides. I don't know, we just like seeing the views and enjoying that hour and a half to spend with each other every day. If she takes 106, I will just get down on the same bus stop as her and then walk to her workplace and then change bus to my workplace.
I love bus rides because this is the time where I can like do some work on my phone, uh, reply emails. At the same time, like my life is already fast paced. I can have a break, so I just sit and just look around. You're a spectator and then you feel more connected. You don't feel like the world just revolves around you. It's something that I feel is a driving factor for me doing community work as well. I'm Taufik Yusof, co-founder of Budega Bubble Shop. We live by create, connect and community. Our slogan is to a better community, one haircut at a time. When I was younger, actually, I didn't have much ambition. I didn't even know what subjects to take in school. Because my father was very interested with like geography, history. We grew up watching documentaries together. So that was how geography and history became my main subjects. History is like kind of like gossiping also. Lah. So I, I realised I like people and studying people. That's how I ended up taking psychology in uni. I took up counselling because counselling is a vehicle or a tool for me to help others to be of service and it's something that I really enjoy. Seeing true cases from beginning to end, seeing how they grow is something that uh, gives me meaning in life. Did I ever plan to be in the army? Definitely not. Hi, I'm Captain Juliana Jamal. I am a soldier. I'm in charge of about 10 SAF regulars, 25 NSF instructors. We also see about 300 vocational trainees eight times a year. Sense of duty to me is uh, taking ownership, being accountable to the person or people that I work with during the journey until the objectives are met, seeing the growth in people. I feel very satisfied when I can equip my soldiers with life skills, tangible or intangible. I would love for them to have some takeaways from national service, whatever it may be. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, that time. What's your name? Kereta kau dah okay? We first see all, we just cut hair, but we get to meet and chat with people. Lah. I think they're the small and the nice bonuses that we get. Lah. Bodega basically it's a corner store in uh, New York. Lah. But it's not that we are a corner store, but we take the concept from the corner store where uh, everyone from different backgrounds and environment come to the same place to get the same thing or to, to buy stuff. Yeah, so I think that's the concept that we want to exchange over here. It's about the human connection. This barber chair is a special barber chair. The magic happens not with the haircut. The magic is when they sit down, they feel homely. Oh, I think I can be myself. Sir. Then that's when they just let it out. They just check. They can talk about anything they want. Nobody gonna judge them, nobody gonna think like, you weird, sir. That's the magical part of it. Uh. Strangers can be friends. Uh. Bye. I know Taufik from our old previous shop. We used to cut together. I knew Taufik from another barber shop as well. I was a customer back then. And then from there, we started noticing each other and then we started hanging <laughs> We started hanging out maybe once in a while. 
Yeah, and then that's how we hit it off. Uh. When we were working at other barber shops, there were a lot of things we wished we could do but couldn't because it was not up to us. We thought like we should open our barber shop together so we can bring all our ideas to life. We create something to connect with the community and our people for the better good. Yeah. Committed lah. Aku tak pakai blade tau, betul? Tak tak, uh, 0.5 je. You all started from giving haircuts or, or teaching haircuts in prison itself. Most of these events and projects come in the form of an opportunity. Sometimes people come by our clients and they talk about certain problems or certain things and then just came to us and like, hey, we can do something about this and things like that. For the first project that we did Save Sulawesi, right? our client is working with Muslim Youth Forum and they are trying to find ways to get the message out there. So we decided to uh, collaborate with them. Lah. People see that we do all these things right, and then they want to get involved as well. It's a place where we can connect other people with other industries or community yeah. to have a bigger picture of what yeah. we want to do. We want to do more than just cutting hair. There's this idea in London where they felt that the high rate of crime existed in the neighbourhood because of the lack of male representative. They realised that the only regular male representative in a teenager life is their barbers. So they train barbers to do counselling and things like that. One of the kids who started that came to Singapore, introduced the idea. So we were selected to be that barber. So we that a neighbourhood estate with a high youth at risk and then to see for yourself how barbering is just that simple thing that actually can connect people together. Lah. It just got us moving lah, forward like, okay, this, this is why we're doing things lah, because we feel very connected to this philosophy that we have. Lah. So April 15 was BMPC School 5's graduation parade. I'm officer in command in BMPC School 5. All my soldiers come from all four services in the SAF, Army, Navy, Air Force and Digital and Intelligence Services. I can see one more rehearsal from you guys. 60%. That's all. Yes, let's go. They are PES unpaid, PES C and E soldiers. Go. One, two, one. Turn your head to the front. Is that clear? Yes, Sergeant Major. To create meaning for their national service, we ensure that they are vocationally trained as well. So these soft skills that we aim to teach them in BMT during their training are transferable to their day-to-day -day lives. So we see this as a form of total defence as well because they contribute to every aspect of society after they ORD and become professionals in their own sectors. I wish you guys happy graduation and good parade. Thank you very much. My background in psychology, having all this experience dealing with people helps me improve or better serve the people that I'm in charge of. My soldiers go through nine weeks of BMT training. When they graduate, they are the only ones wearing berries because they are the professionally trained soldiers. What's unique about BMTC School 5's graduation parade is all the parade appointment holders, parade commanders, parade sergeant majors are all their own peers. My recruits, my trainees own their own parade. And that parade was something that we really worked hard for. Every graduation parade is such a joy for all of us as instructors as well to watch. You somehow feel like you're like a proud mama, seeing all your trainees graduate and owning the parade. Mm. Yes. What part of the go to this building? This is Sam Leong Road. Give me a moment, I'll check for you. Where are Oh, okay. Jalan Besa. Yeah. Uh, 857. Yeah, about 45 minutes. Okay, 45. Yeah, 857. The bus stop name? LNB Road. LNB Road. Mm, the bus driver know where is it? LNB so Road. If I tell the uncle that I want to go to this place, mm -hmm. then. How about I give you the bus stop number? Then after that, you just show it to the captain. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Two, three minute walk only. After you alight. Yeah. 
Hello? Ah, Yishun, Yishun Interchange, yes. Only one number, yes. right? Mm. 8.7.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.
like you can smell like the different refineries around the way. Hey, I remember 252, if you if you take the non-aircon bus, you can smell the chocolate. Yeah. Uh, the chocolate smell, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Only non-aircon bus, then you can smell. Good memories, yeah, right? Sure. I remember when I first liked buses as a kid, right? I didn't know that there were so many people who liked buses also. Right? Until uh, one fine day, uh, I came across that article right on a newspaper. My mother showed me bus enthusiasts in Singapore. And after that, they posted a screenshot of the Facebook group. And then I joined. And then I see all of you all down there. Also, <laughs> then that's how we met. All. So uh, actually, uh, Matthew here is uh, my longest friend amongst all of them. I've known him for, I think, around 14 years already. We watch each other like go through PSLE and like N levels also. Yeah, right? that's right. Yeah. And then finally, we are here. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> Our girlfriend Matthew here, so he's like the first one to be like eligible to get his class four license. His movement actually like inspired us to actually also join him, like follow his footsteps. So it's like fulfilling a dream together like, as a group. Yeah. How long have you been driving for him? Going to be a year soon already actually. Yeah. Quite fast, huh? Yeah, so quite fast. Yeah. I go for around more than a year already. Yeah, yeah I'm already. Yeah. How about you? New days. <laughs> <laughs> I think he just passed his license around a month ago. Yeah. So he's still getting, getting, getting yeah, like yeah. yeah. See, what makes it more fun, I feel, is that we all train each other. Yeah. 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 So, so Matthew actually trains us. Yeah. After that, as we progress, we train him. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so he like, pass on the skill and everything. Yeah. It's quite good to be close. Yeah. So it's now 5.08. Uh, be, Tiara will be leaving her job at 5.30. Bye, guys. So I'll be making my way to the bus stop. We would catch the same bus to go home together. I used to work up till 8 p.m. Now that I'm married, I arrange my working hours to be with her more at home and things like that. I will take a bus from here and then I will text her like, hey, I'm in this bus and she will hop on the bus and then we'll just go home together. When I met Taufik, I just thought he was a very interesting individual. Whenever I see him do all these things to help other people, to help the less fortunate and the amount of effort he gives to get support for his different events, it's a lot of hard work but he's very resilient and he's someone who's not willing to give up on the things that he wants to achieve in life, his dreams and goals. You know, my younger days, I really wanted to be a fireman to sign on. During national service, I served time in detention barrack because I helped out a friend do his IPPT. So uh, we got caught and I felt that my life is shattered because of uh, my uh, record. So I'm lucky because I got the chance to still be a fireman even though I only serve 10 days. I think the impact is quite a lot for me. I, I fell into it. I fell into depression. As a firefighter, I have to serve one day work and two days off. So on the two days off, I will be a barber. When you're alone with the client, giving haircuts, you will tend to get very personal. People will tend to open up. And when they open up, they sometimes share the hardest problems or things like what they're facing right now. I realised that they meant like, these guys are going through much more than me. And here I meant complaining, you know, thinking my problems are bigger than other people. Lah. And then I felt uh, disgusted lah, with myself. And then slowly, there's a direction. Lah. I don't really want to be a fireman anymore. I felt that with barbering, I can do much more. I can give more. And I felt that you know, this journey is going to be more fun. I believe so. Uh. My first community work was with a children's home where I would teach the boys how to do haircuts. I felt that you know, whatever I went through with my life, barbering has changed it like, in a sense. So I want to teach these kids or give them the opportunity that I had. Like. I got support from different barbershops, different friends. So they came down, but the turnout wasn't that great. These kids have trust issues. So only on the last day, they came up. So we changed everything into a haircut session. Lah. Since it's Ramadan, right? We ended everything with a breakfast, lah, iftar session with everyone. And one of the barber was like, now that we have their trust, now we have that bond, let's not waste it. Lah. 
So once a month we try to come down to that children home, give fair cards, and then true enough lah, the bond got stronger. 2019. Just so happened that I'm about to have a program where I will give free haircuts. So I told the kids like, come down lah. They came by and then you met them years before, but you can see them physically grown up. So yeah lah, it's a nice feeling lah, in a sense. Bus 14 has been one of the very few constants in my life. I used to take bus 14 to school and back. Now I take bus 14 to the train station and come to work. I'll take bus 14 home after my yoga class. The special thing about bus number 14 even is that Quiffin also takes it. Hey. Hello! Hi, my friend! Hello. I miss you! <laughs> Quiffin and I have been friends like since forever. I met her during my interning days at the uh, Family Service Centre where she was a social worker. And Quiffin was one of the friends that uh, I would take the bus home with because we live nearby. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We hit it off because we were both a little bit mad. La. Like we had a similar sense of humour. So that's how we clicked. La. When she said she wanted to go into the armed forces, we were like, whoa, serious? Like, are you, are you sure that you like, think through? We were quite shocked because it's very difficult to imagine her as a army personnel. So my first real job was in IMH in the forensic psych department. Uh, I loved it, I loved the patients. But somehow, I didn't see myself growing as a person or professionally. And SAF psychiatrist was attached to IMH then. And he highly recommended that I sign up with the SAF um, because he said uh, my personality is what's needed in the organisation. Yeah. When I hear about the, the things that she shares with me at work, I hear that she tries to measure the situation. She doesn't just look at like, okay, work needs to be done and things like that. She will also check in with whoever that it is who is having difficulties completing his or her work find out whether is there anything that's been happening in his or her life and try as much as possible to provide support to them. I mean, that's just who she is. Those are excellent qualities as a, as a leader. I was 27 then and I never looked back all the different opportunities that I'm presented with and the structure in SAF as much as people would think it's rigid, but it's not. It's something that I needed as well to see to, to help me grow. Yeah, as a person and to help other people grow as well. Whenever we go out, meet in town or wherever that it might be, then we'll just take the bus together. That journey is the time that we get to share a little bit more la, about what's been going on. She's one of my uh, close support system. These support systems are very important. This friend whom I can chit-chat with in the bus about anything and everything on our way home and it has always been like this yeah, since we met. Yoga is a lifestyle for me. It's not just about the fancy poses that we all love to post online and get likes for. It's about the practice of mindfulness that matters the most to me. Being mindful about my breath, being mindful of situations, and seeing how I have grown over the past few years. and bus journeys help me practice my reflections as well. So from a student to a trainee as a soldier, uh, bus 14 has seen me through it all.
This is the bus stop that I take the bus 40 home from school, primary and secondary school. So it's about five minutes walk from this bus stop to school. Um, yeah, so let's take a trip down the lane. Everything is very unfamiliar. Everything is new to me. I think this was our assembly area. Probably played netball here as well. Everything was like tarmac. Rough grounds. Yeah, where we sustain our um, battle injuries for netball. It's very smooth now as compared to last time. I guess times have changed. In a good way. Yeah. So unfamiliar. Wow, I guess the science block is still here. Colour is different now. NCC training was like behind the science block last time. So we could get punished uh, by our seniors uh, and our teacher in charge can't see and, and stop it from happening. Yeah, so those were like good memories last time. I used to be in the band in primary school. Uh, so I thought I will continue being in the band in secondary school. But uh, my bestie insisted that I join her in NCC. So when I decided to have a career change in SAF, um, it wasn't a culture shock for me. Uh, all the regimentation, uh, the commands, uh, training in Takong, uh, all the sergeants that were um, that appeared unfriendly, um, weren't as intimidating. A bit of the camaraderie that, uh, that's very familiar when you go to SAF. Um, going through thick and thin, like all the punishments and all that, right? Yeah, so NCC was great. So I grew up taking bus dirty quite a lot. If there's a football match, my dad would take me to Galang Stadium. And then during Ramadan, we would go to uh, Gilang together as a family, bus 30 as well. Back then, I was living at Bedok. My family would go over to West Coast, my grandma's place. You know, Bedok to West Coast is very far. So in those days, there is a nice scenery uh, because we are passing by to the Benjamin Church Bridge. So we can see Singapore. You know, Kalang River and then all the Tanjung Road area. Before that, there is no condo around. They still have a shipyard. Then the journey down to Tanjung Paga, you can see a KTM railway station. Then straight to Teluk Branga World Trade Center. The old name of this harbour front is a World Trade Center. Every time uh, on the way to the journey, I tell them all, all the history of the road. I always remember that that feeling I had when I take bus 30 and that excitement I have when I'm about to see the view of Singapore. Before, some part of it was plain fields and then you can see the bay. Now, it's more architectural, more buildings, more developments. Life is like a bus ride. Huh? When you take a bus, you just move forward. Like for me, I have an idea of success, but there are some hiccups in life. But you just persevere. At the end of the day, you get to the point that you want to go. You will eventually lah, if you persevere. Good afternoon, guys. Okay, so later, we will do the Bodega X phase uh, community work. Lah. So we will give haircuts to migrant workers. Okay, scissors or... uh, and shears. How many sets do you bring? After that, we will have some team bonding program and games to be played with ex-convicts. So, uh, bring one towel as well. We just bring a product, kan? just one top. By seven, we will wrap up everything and then we will break fast together. Lah. Right, let's go. let's go. So, as the years goes by, our project tend to get bigger and bigger because of uh, the exposure that we have, the connections that we have. So right now, we run something called FACE. Lah. We hire ex inmate straight out of Changi Prison for six months minimum. We would also launch a clothing brand called FACE as well, where it's being used to finance the projects that we will do under FACE. Lah. So the projects are mainly focused on an avenue for the ex-inmates to be involved in community work. Yeah. 
<laughs> so over here on uh, this wall is um, my growing up years as a teenager. At the bottom over here is my first overseas trip with my friends to Hong Kong in 2014. And as you can see, it was taken in the bus also. So our purpose for traveling overseas is to experience the culture and like the bus system and how it runs. And yeah, I really enjoyed myself because it was my first overseas trip and it was with my friends. More recently, I went to Hong Kong with Gabriel, Aloysius and Glenn. I was the planner of the trip. So I made sure to plan as many bus rides, different bus rides, different bus models as possible. They brought home a lot of photos as memories and we visited the model shops. And yeah, they spent a lot of money buying those uh, bus models to bring home. I don't think I'll get sick of uh, seeing buses because for the past 12 to 13 years, I've seen buses, new ones, old ones, scrapped ones, and like each bus has a different story to tell. For example, they are made from a different engine. They are made with a different body and they sound different, they look different. There's actually a lot of uh, variety out there. So I don't think it's that easy to actually get disinterested in buses as a whole. Through Facebook, I managed to know a collector of an ex-SBS bus and I managed to hit him up and we went to Hong Kong to actually take photos of this ex-SBS bus. So we were in a very remote part of Hong Kong taking some photos of the buses over there. We actually called our Hong Kong friend that we were there and he would actually bring the bus, the ex-SBS bus down to meet us. And when the bus first pulled up, we were actually very surprised at the condition. Everything was still looking very mint. It actually sounded almost the same as uh, when it was in Singapore about three years ago. It was still in a very good condition. It's very clean inside and outside and the owner actually makes effort to take care of the bus. I'm going to buy something for my suit later. Let's see if we have some um, suun. Hi, Uncle. Hi. Suun, please. Small one. Small one. This one, this one. Okay, one. Okay, so this is Block 85, Fengshan Hawker Centre, Market. I think it's pretty famous for a lot of Singaporeans. If I take the bus home, it will be this bus stop and I usually buy some like groceries, yeah, eggs, whatever, depending on the time. The Hawker Centre, the wet market, has always been here. Just Jenny. Obviously, time has evolved and, and everything about Singapore has evolved as well. What is more prominent to me is how things have remained the same over the years. Taking bus 14 early in the morning uh, is still full of students. So, yeah, that's, that's, that's nice. From a more easygoing task of going to school to taking me to work. From a young no responsibilities except to study kind of adolescent to now an adult. Bus 14 has seen uh, lots of milestones in my life and I'm pretty sure uh, if the route doesn't change, you will still see more milestones in my life. Yeah, two more years of Bus 14 journeys. Okay, come. Okay, Assalamualaikum everybody. We are from Bodega Barbershop. Ah. So today, what we plan is to get haircuts for you guys and then we play games inside. All of us feel that barbering is something that connects us to something bigger. So for our first phase committee project, we got some migrant workers and ex-inmates together. They have their own problems in life or hardships. So with this, uh, we put everything aside. We bond together, have fun together, laugh together. Sometimes when you are being a victim of the situation, right, you will tend to be immersed by it, all this darkness. So all you need to do is just to step out of it and just look at the bigger picture. So that's what we're trying to do with FACE. I believe as an ex inmate we need emotional support by connecting with people, 
who are positive, bringing good vibes, we can forget our emptiness. Uh. We can actually overcome this feeling. I mean, we all know how difficult it is to get back into the society. So I think by doing this, we also give them like more self-esteem and self-confidence to get back into society and the community, to the outside world. Okay, how today? Okay, just now. Nice. Which one is very hard? The on top one, ah. Huh? That one, that one scary, ah. Huh? Ah, yeah. Oh, nice one. Okay. After I talk personally to them, I get to learn how foreign workers they got more obstacles to like go through. So, if can, I like to help more. But at least for this community project, we help them by letting them let off some steam. My favorite is the washing room. Smashing room. Yeah. Why? Why you like the smashing room? Oh, because if I angry, then I go inside. I can hump them. Then by ah. angry, I can... Because every day you yeah. build, 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 yeah. then today, then you break, huh? The friends I meet today are mostly foreign workers. I do delivery at Haugang area, Farouk. He work at my area. So I told him that uh, if you see my vehicle number, you make sure to uh, you acknowledge me. Uh. What I like about this event is that it also makes us feel useful so we can contribute something to the society. Okay, go! At the end of the day, you have to try to walk as many paths. Ah. Just open up your worldviews. Ah. Even for myself right now, there's so much more things that I've not seen. And you know, all these things can change the idea I have towards the world or how life should be. I thought that my journey okay, was you. to sign up with SCDF and then I founded Barbering. And by Barbering, they actually created more opportunities and gave me another meaning and direction in life. To better community, one haircut at a time. This is the day in my life of an interchange supervisor. When I first reported to work, I assisted in the run out, making sure that the bus captains, they report to work on time. Oh, today, 856. Good. Here you go. Mm. Seems pretty good. Uh, we are looking at everyone who is reporting to work on time. Some even reported quite early. Hello. So I think today is going to be quite a good day. Like this uncle over here. He comes actually really, really early for work. And he always sits outside. bus park to take a look and check, make sure that everything is in order, the buses are properly parked. Jepo okay lah. And yeah, have a chit chat with our bus captains as well. Hey, what are you doing today? 856. 856. We also had some ad hoc situations that happened today. There was a problem with the display. It's supposed to show 856, but it only showed 854. We did a bit of troubleshooting, like we off the power and then we on again. And I helped him to set the correct destination. Most of the time, if we can see from the office, we'll just run out and help the bus captain. So a bus isn't running, we have to go and find out why and arrange for replacement immediately. This is very important to keep the service running and always flowing to serve our commuters as well. There was also another situation where a passenger's baby vomited on the floor. We have to make sure to call on off the area and also ask for the cleaner to help us to clean up the place to make sure that the interchange is speak and span. Followed by yeah, answering a lot of queries at the passenger service office. I had dinner with the bus captains at the restroom. Oh, you bring from home, man. And I was also very interested to note that they actually are eating dinner prepared by their wives, which is so nice. It'll be better than any other food that you buy outside. Yeah. Hey, Raj. Prong cake for you, for your hard work. Okay, yes. okay, thank mm. you, thank you, yeah. thank you. Thank you. Mm.
Gini, gini, gini. Si Aping. Kan orang ini nyusah. Right now, it's 11, close to 11.20. In 10 minutes, we are going to check on the last buses and make sure that they depart on time and no running passengers are left behind. At 12.55 a.m., the very, very last bus from Yishun Interchange, which is the feeder service, 801, will depart. And I have to make sure that the bus departs on time, and then I wait for it to come back before hopping on to take a bus home from Mandai Depot. And that's how I end my day. In the next 10 to 20 years, I foresee myself to still be working in an operations department because I love uh, dealing with operations and like the details. And it's also like playing a small part in moving Singapore daily. Set! Go, 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 go,